Welcome to St. Martin's on Maundy Thursday. Thank you for joining us for this service of noonday in prayer. Our service begins on page 103 on your book of common prayer. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We will read together Psalm 116, which is found on page 759 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let's read Psalm 116 together. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson today is taken as a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson is a reading from the Gospel according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, 
One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, for is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed his feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I realized that I had been allocated Monday, Thursday, noonday prayer to lead this time of worship, I was thrilled because these days have special significance for all of us, but feel particularly pertinent for me and probably most of us actually at this time. We're on the brink of the triduum, the most holy and sacred three days in our year of worship together. And although it might sound daft, I managed to go through most of seminary and my first two years of curacy without fully experiencing the beauty of our Christian worship together in these days. I had spent far too many years, jumping straight from Palm Sunday and the beauty and triumphant entry into Jerusalem to the joy of the resurrected Jesus on Easter Sunday and skipped all the difficult things in between. Monday, Thursday, beginning tonight, Good Friday and the agony of Holy Saturday. We have this intimate picture of Jesus today at supper with his friends, washing their feet, and then into the garden. We have the agony of losing Jesus tomorrow on Good Friday and watching his tortured and beaten body on a cross. And most pertinent of all for me is the desolation and emptiness of Holy Saturday, the day that seems to never end, where we're left alone with our thoughts and fears and insecurities. And following all of that is the relief as much as the glory of Easter Sunday. From this point on, and sometimes it feels like this in our life together in the world we live in right now, which is why this feels such a pertinent time of year for the crisis in which we find ourselves. Things tend to get a little worse before they get better. And sometimes it feels like God is absent even though we know he really is present. We're together in worship today. We'll go through the pain of the next few days together. And we'll have Easter Sunday together, that glorious celebration. But we know it will just be a tiny taste of the celebration we'll all have when we're finally able to meet together again. And the only way through to Easter Sunday from this point is through. We have to go through the agony of the next few days to get to the relief of Easter Sunday. 
And the only way to get to the end of the situation we face right now as a nation and as the world is straight through the middle. The only way out is through. And so if Easter this year feels like a beautiful time together and a time of worship that is significant and powerful and brings hope, how much more will our gathering together as a whole community be when we're finally reunited in this beautiful building? And in the same way, the difference between how we feel this Easter Sunday and how we will feel when we're finally reunited together And that time and the time when we meet our Heavenly Father and we're in eternity with him all together again is a greater leap for us to make. So the only way out from this point is through the intimacy but the pain of Maundy Thursday. We will watch the agony of Good Friday We will feel the desolation of Holy Saturday, bringing us to the relief of Easter Sunday. So lean in to these next few days. Bring your songs of mourning and your prayers of lament, for we worship a God who can handle it all. Lean in in prayer and worship and pain and agony and bring it before the Lord. The only way out is through. But what a glorious day that will bring us to together. Amen. Our service will continue on page 106. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray together in the words that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We continue on page 107. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people, found on page 383. With all our hearts and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Anglican communion, for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, for our presiding bishop, Michael, for all bishops, especially Andy, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, Donald, 
the Congress, the courts, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, especially those in hospitals and those who have requested our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the many people who have contracted the virus, for comfort for those grieving loved ones who have died, and peace for those who are fearful as the virus spreads. For those in isolation, those who have lost their jobs or their business, for parents who find themselves trying to homeschool their children, and for all those in our communities involved in ministering to the sick, especially for all healthcare workers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For other concerns of our parish, especially for all who serve in our armed forces and their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace throughout the world, especially in the Middle East, for the victims of terror attacks and for the protection of our Christian brothers and sisters who face danger or persecution for their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those impacted by all natural disasters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the blessings of this life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, we give thanks for their lives and pray for their loved ones left behind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of Martin and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. To thee, O Lord, our God. Almighty God, we pray thee graciously to behold this thy family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death upon the cross, who liveth and reigneth for ever and ever. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you all and all those whom you love and pray for this noonday and evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.